Good morning and welcome to the 15th Sunday after Trinity. This is, uh, we're still in the Trinity season, however, uh, for a number of uh, years now, we, we're choosing the Sunday that's closest to September 11th to commemorate September 11th, 2001, that fateful day and that attack on our country. We're calling it Patriot Sunday. So what we're doing this morning is, a, is something slightly different. We're still going to use the propers from the 15th Sunday after, uh, sorry, we're still going to use the collect at least for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. And uh, yet we, were, we are going to use the, um, the collect epistle and gospel also the, for, for our lessons. The epistle and gospel are going to be taken from the Independence Day propers. Those are found on page 263. I'm going to provide uh, page numbers and slides for all of, of all these for you, but that's how it's going to go. So here, here's what's going to happen. We're going to begin on page three with our opening sentences. We're going to go right to page six and do our confession, absolution, and go forward. But when we get to our, um, first, all, first of all, today, we're, our, first, our, our psalm is 148, Psalm 148. That's found on page 524 of your prayer book. So pay, mark, mark page 524 there. Uh, just a short 13 verse psalm this morning. Psalm 148. Our epistle actually is this morning will be the lesson appointed for the epistle because Deuteronomy is not an epistle. This is the lesson appointed for the epistle. Deuteronomy chapter 10 beginning at verse 17. This is found on page 263. As you turn over to page 264 you'll find the gospel there. Just a short gospel from Matthew chapter 5. So those are our actual lessons that we'll be using this morning. And the sermon will be oriented... Uh, uh, roughly at least around uh, those, as well as other things that are having to do with September 11th. Uh, then, of course, your prayer for, um, uh, for Independence Day, which we're using today for Patriot Sunday, is also there found on page 263. So we'll use those lessons as usual, but because we're still in, in, in Trinity 15 and Trinity season, I'm going to read two collects. When I read the collect for Independence Day, right after that, I'm going to read the collect for the, for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. That's on page 210. So if you are following along, you're, you haven't gotten lost. We're going from Trinity 14 to Trinity 15 today. So keep a, a marker in that because we'll go back to normal next week, I believe. I don't think there's any Saints Day or anything celebrated that time. So I believe we've got all our page numbers in order. And with that, we will get started with our morning prayer service. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world, and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 148. O praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all ye angels of his. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars and light. Praise him, all ye heavens and ye waters that are above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he spake the word, and they were made, he commanded, and they were created. He hath made them fast forever and ever. He hath given them a law which shall not be broken. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapors, wind and storm fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowls, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the world, young men and maidens, old men and children, praise the name of the Lord. For his name only is excellent, his praise above heaven and earth. He shall exalt the horn of his people, all his saints shall praise him, even the children of Israel, even the people that serveth him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The lesson appointed for the epistle is written in the 10th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, beginning at the 17th verse. The Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave, and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God, that hath done for thee these great and terrible things, which thine eyes have seen. Here endeth the lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee 
and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The Holy Gospel is written in the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 43rd verse. Jesus said, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This morning, we're using the propers or the collect, the gospel and the epistle, those three elements there, uh, for Independence Day, found in our prayer book, to help us once again remember that fateful day of September 11th, 2001. Uh, these lessons and that prayer, uh, they will help us to recall the great gift that God has given us and bestowed upon us um, in, the, in the land that we call the United States of America. Uh, the collect for the day sets forth our duty as citizens of this great country with these words. Grant we beseech thee how we prayed. Grant we beseech thee that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain these liberties in righteousness and peace. This country is unique in the world uh, and in world history because it is the only one founded upon the principles that most clearly resemble Christian biblical teaching or a Christian framework. Uh, today we're recalling this gift of God, being thankful for it, and at the same time remembering those members of this very nation who were going about their daily lives who perished in a most shocking and horrific way. An article co-authored by Frank Wright and Eric Loxamo, titled just re recently released, titled September 11th, Our Appointment in History, they write these words, <clears throat> quote, There are times when God in his providence allows people to see in full view events that will constitute an indelible mark in human history. Patriots assembling in Philadelphia experienced it on July 4th, 1776. Sailors looking to the westward skies sought on December 7th, 1941. Families listening to their radios heard it on November 22nd, 1963. In an instant, the signing of a document, the dropping of a bomb, or the firing of a gun, the world suddenly and irreversibly changes. Yet no event in American history is quite no American no event in American history quite compares to the morning of September 11th, 2001. Buildings scraping the floors of heaven crumbled. Planes carrying businessmen, grandmothers, and children plummeted. For thousands, life and all its promises and possibilities ended. Some in an instant. Others, while saving strangers, running upstairs or storming cockpits. Unquote. And we might add, of course, as, as Christians, uh, uh, most importantly, a, a young virgin girl betrothed to a man, beholding their newborn son, whom they have been uh, told was, will have a kingdom, will have no end. Or that same child, now a fully grown man, risen from the dead three days after lying in a tomb. These certainly count as the events in history that have left an indelible mark. Uh, there are many other events in history, of course, all around the world that people would like to add to this list of important and life-changing events, I'm sure. For those first few, those first few words there are important, however, uh, today. There are times when God in his providence allows people to see, dot, 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 fill in the blank. God in his providence will at times uh, bring about events that will get the attention of people in, in dramatic and drastic ways. Uh, and through these events, uh, he will change minds, he will convert hearts, and other times, 
hearts will be hardened and, and remain unconverted. But our prayer again this morning where we ask God to grant that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain our liberties and in righteousness and peace is very important. If we are called to ask God often for this, what might it look like for the Christian? Well, Scripture, among many other things, gives us a worldview. It tells us where this world came from. It tells us that God created it a long time ago, and, and he created it out of nothing. He filled it with all kinds of life, and, and that we are the crown. We as human beings are the crown and glory of all of God's creation. We are created in his image and called to be stewards of his creation, co regents or vice regents in governing all that God created. And we are also told not long after that, this paradise was severely damaged and marred by the contrary desires of God's highest creation, mankind. And consequently, the world we now live in is a result of the fall of our first parents. Yet immediately after that, God promises that that same couple, that he would work out a plan of redeeming them and of all creation and of all of what they brought on uh, God's creation. As time went on, God called a certain people out of a certain land to be a, an example of all of what was just mentioned there. Israel would be God's chosen people, his redeemed people. They would represent God's love for a people whom he would be redeem. And in them, we would see God leading and guiding them. They were, they were to walk in his ways and live according to his commands and all would go well with them. And to this, they, the people said, all this we will do. Yet demonstrating they are the prototype uh, or the perfect model for all of mankind, uh, individually or as a group, they, like we do, they broke their promises to God. <clears throat> they strayed once again after their own hearts and desires. They went after other gods. They broke God's commands. And this cycle continued, has continued throughout history even in the church, uh, in, in the lives of Christians in similar ways today. We are called now to break by the grace of God, the grace that God supplies and, and, the, and the assistance of his Holy Spirit, break this pattern and live unto God now in holiness and righteousness, and yet we continue, however, to err and stray from God's ways like lost sheep. So this very rough sketch, brief sketch of, of our history now is what forms our worldview. This is how we now look at the world. Uh, we are to view the world today in light of this history. We are not to live separated from this worldview. We are to now live and believe that this is our history. And what we do from this day forward is based on what we know about God and about our history. When we have this worldview, we are able then to answer questions like, what is reality? Why are we here? What is the meaning of life? What shall I do in this life? What is my end? All of these are answered fully and rightly only when we hold on to a Christian worldview. And with this view of things, we then are able to live lives that reflect our belief in what has happened so far in history and what is to come. It'll help us understand why this country has come into being. Why other countries have not come into being in, uh, like this or why they have in the way that they have? It helps us understand who we are in relation to God and who we are in relation to other people. Because we live in a fallen world, we are constantly going to see evil and sin and corruption and brokenness and failure and tragedy. But because we also live in a world that's being redeemed, we're going to see God's kingdom advancing. People coming to faith, goodness, kindness, and other virtues practiced in the name of Jesus. So this should give us a perspective as to why we should value where we live in particular. Its founding principles, our founding principles, mentioned earlier there, closely resemble, closely resemble Christian law, Christian virtue, Christian freedom in a, in a lot of ways. And so why not enjoy these things since they are rare commodities compared to the vast majority of the rest of the world? Uh, which does not enjoy such uh, blessings from God as we do. <clears throat> now, now, today's lesson for the epistle, we have an excellent example of God um, forming a worldview in us. If we back up just a few verses in Deuteronomy 10 this morning, uh, we read this. Now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you 
but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and the statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. If we are members of Abraham by faith, as we have recently learned in the past few weeks that we are, and we are grafted into the tree that is Israel, then we also are Israel by adoption. Therefore, God's commands to ancient Israel in this sense, apply to us today as well. Walk in his ways, love him, serve him, keep the commands and the statutes of God. These are the overarching themes, again, which create our worldview. So then today, in a similar way as in Deuteronomy 10, as it continues starting in verse 17, for the Lord your God is God of gods, Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who is not partial and takes no bribe, so God's not to be ignored or trifled with or to be forgotten when contemplating and living out our worldview. He is present, he's active, and he's at work in this world, and he's great and mighty and awesome. <clears throat> and these facts about God should also guide us in our daily lives as Christians who desire to be patriotic. Uh, we've learned over and over that the world has fallen, mankind has been corrupted. Yet we are, our involvement is vital in the country that we live in as lights in a fallen and darkened world. Since all men are corrupted, and some more than others, and Christian involvement seems inevitable, because if we don't get involved, we're just resigning ourselves to other corrupt people, other corrupt men who don't share our worldview, they don't know God, they're gonna live and act and rule without the guidance of God. So the Christian's involvement is important to maintain at least some semblance of order and justice, goodness, fairness, and, and preservation. The scriptures tell us in Proverbs 29, when the righteous increase, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, the people groan. So without Christian participation in preserving our liberties that have been won for us, and without Christian representation, uh, even in the, in the political process and the education process, our liberties and our freedoms and all that we enjoy will gradually disappear as we see happening around us today. And this begins, as we also find in Scripture, with the children. Deuteronomy chapter 6 this time. Hear, O Israel, skipping down a few verses, these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to their, your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So the presence of God and his commands are to be placed and practiced and instilled uh, in the most important locations in our homes and in our lives so that they're constantly with us as well. So that we're, we're guided by them daily, even minute by minute, by their reminder, by their presence. So it is with Christian patriotism. We are to raise our children in the Christian faith, talking daily with them, praying with them, teaching them the things of God, teaching them the virtues of Christian citizenship. And as our children are raised in the church, so they will become good Christian citizens as adults as well. Those same two authors quoted earlier go on to say this regarding September 11th, 2001. They speak in the article about, as you read it, about the pendulum uh, the pendulum type swing that, uh, of history, swinging back and forth, sometimes between quite opposing um, positions. They write this, quote, the pendulum eventually swung back, leaving people in a bit more moral, a bit more churched, but without the enduring change from a heart and a mind transformed by the gospel, unquote. So the gospel must be the primary element that forms our worldview and how then we live in the world. We all took note in the days after um, how this was true. Flags everywhere, on cars, on buildings, on houses. Church attendance was up. Uh, morale and patriotism was at a high. And then in a short time, the flags were seen from time to time on the side of the road, dirty and torn, fallen from the cars. Uh, were they replaced by a new one? Doubtful uh, with everyone. Um, church attendance dropped back to where it was prior. <clears throat> but those two, those two authors go on to say this. They say, 
Quote, as people of faith, we should ponder Francis Schaeffer's profound question posed generations ago. How should we then live? During the Civil War, Thomas Stonewall Jackson answered the, this very question when asked how he'd be so courageous in battle. He said, my religious belief teaches me to feel as safe in bed. Huh. My religious belief teaches me to feel as safe in battle as in bed. That's the quote there from Stonewall Jackson. I, mean, as I, as I fumble it here. My religious belief teaches me to feel as safe in battle as in bed. He goes on to say, God has not fixed the time for my death. I do not concern myself about that, but to always be ready, no matter when it overtake me. So the, the authors go on. So should it be for us? For the Christian, the unfolding story of this world was no surprise ending. Christ on the cross proclaimed, it is finished. Death, the king of terror, is overcome. We therefore can live bodily, we can live boldly in the marketplaces, churches, halls of government and the front lines of life without fear of uncertainty, only a heartbeat away. This confidence is which, what led heroic believers throughout time. They mentioned Paul or Saul of Tarsus to all the way to Todd Beamer in Flight 93 to stare down death and to do the impossible, unquote. So America has changed over the past 20 years, and yet the message of the gospel has not. Uh, God's command as well as his faithfulness have not. So no matter what the circumstance or what the calling or what kind of involvement we are to have in this life and in this country, we are all called in every moment to bless God and to point people to the saving work of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O eternal God, through whose mighty power our fathers won their liberties of old, grant we beseech thee that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain these liberties in righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy church with thy perpetual mercy, and because the frailty of man without thee cannot but fall, keep us ever by thy help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, 
who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by thy governance may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our governor, who is glorious in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States and to all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with a love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldest be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for thy holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we that unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.